Sky Wrath Mage. Hello everybody, this is Heflamok here on Heflet TV HP2 on Hitbox because all the yeah, all the Twitch channels are full at the moment. Like on Half TV One we have uh GG League playing on Half TV Two, we have the Malaysia Cup eight playing at the moment. That is our hmm, I have to actually look what they're flying up against. This is Genesis versus G Guard and on the other side we have yeah, Balkan Bears versus Moscow Five in but it doesn't matter, you are here, you want to see some Sea Dota and we have for you something good. It's Insidious Idol versus Arcanus Gaming and I hope it's gonna be a good game. We're already, well, not too deep into the draft and something's very, very surprising for me. We're gonna see a Brood, Mother and a Phoenix ban. On top of it, well, the Brewmaster as well as the Death Prophet, yeah, that's not a surprise, but both of the, those make sure we don't see anything of the New Year's in the Captain's mode. Sky of Mage and Elder Titan as a combination for Insidious Elder at the moment and Vengeful Spirit Titan on the other side. So if we have a big fat Ravage, we have the support of the Vengeful Spirit with a spell, a nice aura, some minus armor, source, plus of course that one from the Titan with the Gush is coming out and of course another stun. So we have a slow, we have a stun, minus armor and some utility on the other side we have pretty much the same a stun even though the echo storm is not the most reliable one but of course we have minus armor or minus base armor rather there as well as minus magic resist and it helps of course the sky of mage some nice synergy there going into the second bun duration here and we have well venomans are being banned out that's also a very interesting one because i haven't seen him for ages but then again it is c dota everything can happen here oh. Let's see where this one is leading. Naga Siren being banned out, I can completely understand that. Like in Anti-Mage, okay, like banning out pretty greedy Crazy. heroes, didn't expect that instantly on Insidious Idol. But what I love about the draft at the moment is that, well, it's going fast, it's going really fast. Those guys, they don't hesitate, like 4 seconds just used on the reserve time for Arcanus Gaming. And now it's the first time that Insidious Idol even hesitates a tiny bit. But let's see, Eraser being... Yeah, being picked by Arcanus, which means we have our mid laner, we have our Titan for the offlane already. Elder Titan most likely gonna be the offlane for Insidious Idol, so we have those three lanes already set. We have to see where this one is going. Right now with a Razor you always have to pick carefully what you set against him in the mid, for example. A Viper, which I know the guys love in C Dota, is not always a good option because Viper is so damn slow and Razor will just hard. feed pretty much with static link on him that's that's the biggest problem but let's see ogre magi is coming out so we have a, another stun we have another slow some more magic damage where the elder titan brings up the synergy but now for insidious idol well <laughs> we need some course we need something for the mid we need something farming and that's gonna be the interesting one now what it's gonna be for arcanis well they have one more chance to ban something out so that will most likely be a carry as well just because insidious Isle is forced into that but yeah arcanis for now they settle with the earth shaker which yeah brings us another stun so we have one big fat stunning ultimate already we have the earth shaker now with fisher obviously the echo slam then later on if maybe the titan to find something nice with the ravage vengeful spirit is another stun well, this is gonna be a game of CCing. I I definitely love it. I definitely love it. It it looks good. Let's see where this one is going for for now. And see this idol. Well, make the decision. What it's gonna be? Queen of pain. Queen of pain. <laughs> okay, that's well, more magical damage. So I definitely suggest this racer is gonna get a BKB in time this game, maybe even one of the first items he wants to go for. As for the others, I don't think they have the farm to actually go for that, which means they have to somehow survive it. But the Elder Titan being present there, reducing the magic resist, and there's tons of magic damage coming that way. We have Acrostorm, we have the Astro Spirit, Ignite Fire Blast, maybe later we're even gonna get a Arganum Scepter, and pretty much the entire spectrum of Scarf Mage spells. This is this is just crazy. Insidious Idol magical setup here is just insane. 
absolutely insane. Like Vengeful Spirit, Earthshaker, and even the Tight Hunter, they're getting pretty fast blown up if the combo is right. So we have to see where this one is going. Spectre and Wolfling being banned out. As expected, they go for something that is, yeah, just greedy for the fifth pick because both teams, they definitely have time for it. And I just have to raid uh, something. So that should fix it. As I said today, it's it's pretty crowded here for Hafla TV because we have so many, so many streams online right now. Four Twitch channels, two Hitbox channels, the third one is joining, and now soon also Battle of Central Europe is starting. So it's gonna get crazy here. Crazy crowded. But yeah. They ban out the Morphling and the Spectre. It was already greedy, but there's even something better. Medusa. To be honest, this is one of the, the last greedy ones, like the real greedy ones left. Because Anti-Mage being banned out, Morphling being banned out, Spectre, that almost leaves that yeah, that almost leads to the Medusa. There was not much left as an option here. But let's see, for Insidious Idol, do you want to continue with this magical burst? Picking something, I don't know, that has some magical burst in there, like a gyrocopter would be an interesting option because he brings alone like free spells with magical damage. That might be interesting to be honest. Because it would synergize with what they have already, but then again it's also easy countable with the Raisin and the Medusa go for a BKB at some point. We have to see. I still think it it might be enough to get like a nice dominating position at least going with such a nice laning phase and then maybe a dominating position in the mid game. About late game we have to see if Arcanus can actually hold this or if the combo of Insidious Idol doesn't even work out. That's the biggest question. But as fast the draft was in, well, the pre for the previous picks, this time they take their time. Mirana. And Mirana it is. Okay, I did not expect that, but this is going to be then a farming Mirana. And, well, she brings, of course, some magical swords and everything. Not the ones I expected. I, I think I would have... I think I would have settled with the uh, with the Gyrocopter, rather. But Mirana it is on Chibix. So, let me just check on everything else but everything else should be fine So much to do in the background. That's what I always hate if I have to cast myself. Hang on, toilet. Oh, that's perfect because <laughs> I can fix my stuff in the meantime. That's just perfect. Either way, introducing the players really, really fast. So I get to write my other messages in the background. We have gonna have Isera here playing on the Queen of Pain, Shagasaurus on the Sky of Mage as well as Chibix on the Marana. We saw it already in the draft. And now on the Ocar of Mage, we have Yumu Konpako. Oh, I love this name. That's a cool one. <laughs> and Trui, of course, on the Elder Titan. On the other side, we have Heinrich on the Razor. Someone said it's gonna be Medusa, but you're wrong. Then Mr. Bombach is on the Earthshaker. We have. Uh, Fried Butterflies on the Vengeful Spirit, Mighty Savior Abbey on the Medusa, these names, and Bok on the Titan. So, well, these names are so crazy, and then the Titan finally gives me some relief. He's just like, yo, Bok, that's it. 
But let's see what they are talking. What we eat lunch on here? What? Lecho and Balut together? What the hell are they talking about? Like, I I just woke up, didn't have breakfast or anything, and I think they talk about food, which is bad for me, because I'm really, really hungry. But let's see, guys. We have Mr. Bok going in here into the safe lane, which means we're going to have a aggressive try lane, and similar picture on the other side, even though I'm not sure if that's going to be the final landing, because they're just looking towards the Radiant Jungle at the moment, and trying to find something. Queen of Pain in the front row, okay, that might not be bad, but here we could have a slow, another slow of the Ogre Magi, then an arrow finding the target. Titan, of course, if he gets to skill Kraken Shell, he should be able to escape, but they're not gonna find anything. It's daytime, so nope, nothing's happening here. Arcana is very passive in their play at the moment. They're just gonna make sure everything is gonna be blocked top here, even though, well, there is a ward. Let's see where they put it. Ah, in this spot, okay. Not bad. I definitely like this one. It's kind of hard to find. Unless you stream snipe it. <laughs> Let's see. We have a similar picture here. He is actually having sentry wards. But right now it's not even worth to clock anything in this camp. Since the Titan is going to be solo here. But now those try lines. They're guarding their rune. So top. Let's see. Oh, it's a double damage. That's something you want to wait with obviously. But bottom we have Mr... Yeah, Mr. Chibix is gonna get that bounty rune on the farming Marana. Now the D warding already starts. That's the first ward going down. Oh well, if he ever <laughs> manages to actually hit it. And let's see. <coughs> well, I promise it's the last time I have to tap out here. This is just ah perfect. Okay, now I think now everything should be just fine. See so guys, that's why it's always bad to be manager and caster at the same time. Either way guys, we already have some harass and we of course, we have the first blood, which I completely miss. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry about this, they started now I'm fully into the game. We have the two kills, the first blood was here on the ET, the tri lane striking there and even the titan that going down with what we saw there before, it was only two versus one. But yeah, it was just enough. Bok going down here to a stun, followed up by arrow here, Chipix. That was definitely interesting. In the mid we have some harass, but well, let's see. Chewy here. Oh, so much damage stolen here at the moment by Heinrich. But in the end, it won't be enough. Still, like the damage on him is pretty crazy. He has to be careful. And let's see, the Scarab Mage now rotating bottom. We have to see if that's something dangerous for the Titanta, considering that he already died once. Just two versus one. We have to see if that's gonna happen again, and well, at the moment he's hiding here. Titan has no vision what's going on. This is a dire ward, and oh god, they dive top again here. But this time Heinrich, well, he's gonna get tons of HP. Chewie's gonna die, but they wanna follow up. The problem is there's still a fissure, and oh, there's the stun here on Heinrich. Well, he's still stealing so much damage, they don't have... Oh my god, it's Kompako. He wants to kill Heinrich, and Chemix is coming in. So much rotation and so much hate for all this. Now, Fried Butterflies, he has a huge problem here. He's stuck. Astro Spirit even around. All they need is another stun, and that's pretty much it. That's a two for one trade in the end, but of course, they had to rotate for it. Bok is happy about this because he can farm. He can definitely farm now. Use that time. We have Isera. Well, oh, is there a deny on the illusion rune? No, nothing is coming out, but at least he wants to settle for a bombage kill. But, well, the scream wasn't enough, and <laughs> the Earthshaker is gonna get that kill. That was kind of un unexpected, and I don't think Isera was planning on that Earthshaker to come here. So, what a start into this game. Like, 3 3, 2 minutes in. That's crazy KPM at the moment. Something I, I definitely like. And where's my dashboard? My dashboard is gone. I don't see chat. Where's the chat? There's the chat. Now I see the chat. Everything's fine. Nobody's chatting, so I didn't miss anything. In the meantime, Shagasaurus is probably one of the most happy ones here with all these clashes, because even though he's not assigned in a farming role, he's gonna get quite some experience on this line, but now Chibix is back here. He wants to get his fair share on all of this. But yeah, what crazy action. Six kills in three minutes. I definitely like it. Fried Butterflies now here as well. I don't know if they kind of dissolve that try lane, but it seems like it. And oh, in the background, we have a smoke. They want to go, but at the same time, Bombach is coming in here. Will there be a stun? No, the stun, the magic missile is the first one. And locking them in the arrow is 
gonna be completely whiffed and with the Titaner coming this way, well the stun, he's trying to get this way around but Titaner still, Anchor Smash, it's just having too much of a radius, like the, the, the radius is actually still sick, I was expecting a nerf, like in the last patch on this one, but it didn't really work out. Still, Insidious, Isla and Arcanist, they're playing on this pretty much the same ideas at the moment, both of them were trying to make a gank possible at the same time, and in the end, the smoke of Insidious Idol was not as effective as Arcana's just blunt going there and working with the dual stun and, of course, the anchor smash damage we have. Well, runes incoming. The 4 minute rune. Chibix trying to find the vengeful spirit here. She doesn't care now. Well, nice disjoint on the magic missile, but a beautiful Fisher again, locking them in. And now look at all of this. Like, it will do so much damage. They are slowed right now. Still, we have another magic missile soon very soon even, in about 6 mana, do they even need it, now Roshan is even part of the fight, but look, Isera is joining here into it, he wants to get, uh, Vengeful Spirit, well that's the revenge at least, with Anchor Smash on you, you can't really do anything, but let's see, at the moment the Earthshaker is trying to get something on Shagasaurus, because it's Boots versus No Boots, and Bombas, he's successful, but Isera, well, the problem is he doesn't have Shadow Strike, so he can't really slow him, but if he just follows him up right now, like, that should be another kill. Make that then, yeah, 6 for 5. Still, there's a small advantage on Arcana's side. The amount of kills, still, absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy what we see here. I, I love it. This is new, new style of C Dota. This reminds me of early, I don't know, 213, 214 CIS Dota. But at the moment, well, Chewie going for Heinrich, but he accepts the damage stone. And I don't know if that's really a good idea. We have a slow coming here, but yeah, with Bombach coming in. Oh, what a beautiful Fisher, but it's unfortunately on the wrong side. Chibix managed to leap over it just as it came out. And now Shagasaurus going still for some nice damage here on Heinrich and the Ogre in the background just managing to finish the job. There's a nice arrow. The arrow actually connects to a creep instead of Bombach, and that makes it... Well, retreat time for Insidious Idol, but they tie up here 6 and 6. Nobody's in the offlane, which is kind of hilarious because at the moment we have Insidious Idol just rotating the entire map, getting those revenge kills. They do not want to have Arcana as being in the lead when it's even just about kills, which is quite interesting because I think right now if anyone would be around this lane here farming, just getting the experience, I think that would be a tiny bit better for Insidious Idol. Like in the XP craft, we see it right now that Arcanis simply has players on all three lanes and therefore getting slightly advantage. Again, Bombach stealing that rune from Isera, and bottom we have Bok getting it as well. That was a bounty rune. Really good for him. We are six minutes in. He is level six, which means we have a Ravage from now. And, well, one rotation, big fat Ravage coming up. That would be an easy thing to achieve. Let's see though. Chebik now, it seems like he go he's gonna stay in here, at least in that lane for a while, and the Elder Titan suddenly finds himself on the real offlane, where he settles for now, but he's only level 5 against the Titan who's level 6. Well, let's see. With a rotation, they could make something possible. Either way, top, they're hunting again. It's Bombach. Then, of course, the magic missile. Oh, the first stun is coming out here by Konpaku. The arrow is not gonna land like many arrows before. And now the Scarab Mage is coming in. What a beautiful Fisher separating them. But, oh, the Queen of Pain completely obliterating that Earthshaker. But Heinrich stealing from Isera and getting the kill at the same time. Now Isera, he has to blink away. Heinrich can't use that damage. It's 112 damage stolen. But the right thing to do is retreat till that damage fades. So, in the end, it's a 1 1 trade. Still, we have, of course. The Medusa farming at the same time, which is good. Now Bombach, well, he's pretty much everywhere. Now he's grabbing all that experience here bottom. And that will be enough for a level 5, if not even more, if the next Gribbiff is his as well. So we have soon an Echo Slam to work with as well. Oh, there's an the arrow. Well, nobody's gonna get hit again, but at least slowed. And now with the right clicks and the stun, Ignite is or can follow up if they want to. It's another kill. And this time Arcanus, they're not gonna get the revenge here. Heinrich, well, he doesn't have mana for another plasma field. That would have been enough maybe to kill Chibix, but Chibix, well, he has no leaf this time, but he's out of range for that plasma field. But everything at the moment fine. In Zeta's Idol, they're gonna take that lead. Still, I like what Arcane is, is doing because they find space everywhere. And experience wise, well, they lost a bit because of that one kill, but overall, they do pretty well in experience just because they are always keeping people on free lanes and now they want to go on that ET there is the Fisher to catch up well there's the minus armor there's the magic missile and Chewie you're so screwed so screwed this is minus armor double stun and of course anchor smash it's physical damage he's benefiting fully from it 
that's an easy kill and with that Arcana is, is pretty much on the same kill score again with a tiny bit experience lead obviously I didn't look into into the gold but yeah even the gold is quite fine Isera however is invisible that was the eight minute rune bottom and we have to say he needs someone else he needs anyone else something to follow up the Elder Titan alone his presence could be interesting but it looks like Isera wants to go mid instead But he's gonna give the protection or well the backstabbing potential of the invisibility up just to farm in mid. But maybe there's a rotation in mid. We have a smoke gang. What they need is Fisher into magic missile and it must be perfectly changed. Otherwise Isera is gonna blink out for sure. So let's see what's coming. The Fisher's com coming from the north. Well there's one stun, there's the second one. I don't think this is enough with the Echo Slam, however. There we go, what a beautiful timing, Arcane is making here some beautiful plays, beautifully chained, everything's fine, but oh Heinrich, he was hit by an arrow, now look at all that magical damage just coming his way with the seal on top of it, but nice Bok, what a beautiful Ravage, he's gonna get the revenge right on the spot, the rest of them they obviously get out, there is no detection however, nope, there's nothing, there's no sentry ward, no nothing, oh there's another arrow flying, it's not gonna hit on anything, no Bok was the target, Nope, it's not gonna work. But still, Arcane is having now their advantage back again. With a beautiful rotation. I don't know how many TP scroll we had in this in this game already, but I think we had, I don't know, about 10, 15 TPs already. The entire teams are going, I don't know, south, north, east, west. It's it's just crazy. Medusa right now picking up a Yep, a double damage rune. With that she can even start Yep, to use split shot. It's not a split shot build, she went for the laning. Mystic Snake full mana shield build, which is kind of okay, I guess, against Isera uh, or Queen of Pain in general. Who got that bounty rune tops? Uh, okay, I think that was Chibix. Yep, Chibix got that one, so his bottle is full up again. Still, yeah, is having actually quite some decent goal. I was surprised he didn't finish face boots or anything like that, which is pretty nice for right clicks and whatnot. But now we have a smoke gang, and they're going through the river line. Okay. I guess this is supposed to be a gank on Isera, but no, they're gonna wrap around. They want to come from the background. No Ravage, however. Still, that Fisher, that Skyrim Mage, he's gonna blow up. Look at the gush, Anchor Smash, so much damage already here. And now the Orca is the next target. The arrow, however, is gonna connect, and now Isera is coming in. His ultimate, however, just hitting two people, they're all pretty much low, and now even the creeps and neutral creeps are working with there. Nice Earth, but the Heinrich is gonna get hit, also slowing him a tiny bit, and in the end, they wanna make it sure that, well, Ventress Spears is gonna sacrifice himself, and Heinrich, he wants to turn around here on that Elder Titan. It seems not enough for now. In the end, Heinrich is going down, Bok, well, it's not enough, and the ET makes it out. And with this kinda lucky survival, we have, well, Insidious Idol making the better trade. Overall, and instantly the Orca going mid, grabbing that XP there. But this was not a good fight for Arcanus, not at all. Especially since the Vengeful Spirit, like, tossed himself in there and wanted to say, like, okay, hit me, hit me, and leave the Razor alone. But it didn't really work out. Both of them went down, and they didn't get any revenge kill. The ET, really, on on the edge of his toes there, just escaping. Let's see. The the funny part though is that Arcanus, they are fighting this as four entire game. I mean Medusa wasn't part of anything but that Isera kill in the mid and well we have to see where this one is going because she's farming and farming while Arcanus is just able to I don't know hold off and see this idol as four but oh is there maybe a slow here on Shagasaurus? No the damage is too great there's an arrow flying not connecting on anything now the neutrals just saying hello to Heinrich but at least Shagasaurus makes it out. The dewarding was however successful and top well, there's a new Ravage, and they know it's happening, but oh my god, Isera managed to blink out and Bok completely with the 150 second cooldown. I mean, they're gonna get the tower probably instead, but, well, I don't know, Bok, this is not really a good idea. Now, even the ET is around, the Fisher is gonna hold them back for a tiny bit, but, well, Bombach, he's gonna be slowed, he still has an Echo Slam, if they are too close, this might be a bad idea, but oh, what a nice first, but, oh, beautiful Echo Slam here into... All three of them in the end. It's a two for one trade at the moment. Chewy, he has to run there soon. The next ankle smash that should finish him off. No, it's in the end the razor. That was too greedy by Insidious Idol. I don't know what they thought. 
chasing into an Earthshaker, being aligned with three heroes, that was not a good idea. A 3 for 1 trade, this is a nice little swing. That's 1.5k XP alone for Arcanus in this fight. What a beautiful one. In the mid, however, we have Mr. Medusa, or Mrs. Medusa in this case, getting the tier 1 tower. So Arcanus did not just achieve a 3 for 1 trade, they also found another tower plus the tower top and both of them actually managed to get the last that we see it Medusa there oh but we have a nice slow and silence here on Bombach the ultimate being used by Isera at least they get the revenge on Bombach the, the one who made the play in top still this one revenge kill it doesn't change the fact they lost two towers where Arcanus got the, the last hit and they made a 3 for 1 trade so Arcanus at the moment definitely in a better position we see it in gold it's heading towards 6k 7k and an experience, well, it's a bit up and down, but with the last fight still, it's 4k, around 4k. But Shagasaurus here, find a vengeful spirit, there is the silence, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing you can do in this combination. They just have too much amplification, on, especially on magical damage. Like Shagasaurus, that's one. If the ET was around, that would be the second. Whoa. Oh, wait, I have a black rectangle thing. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that was yesterday's settings for the for the camera. Thanks for telling me. I completely missed that, but now everything should be fine. <coughs> I was streaming yesterday some, some gameplay myself, because I actually played Dora after almost a month break, because last month was super busy with so many tournaments to organize and everything. So, yeah, I was streaming with the webcam on and everything, it was still somehow here in the overlay. Thanks for that, should be updated in two minutes on your screen. Either way, back to the game, I already showed the crafts, it's 15-15 with a revenge kill here on uh, the Vengeful Spirit. We have an arrow fishing here for, well, Medusa, but Medusa doesn't really care. We have at the moment Yasha, drums finished as well as... Ring of Aquila, so let's see what he's going for. Chipix, however, oh, you gotta be careful there. Is the swap the Echo Stomp? Well, it hits him, it does the damage, and it's still enough. Like, that dust was even completely useless because he died anyway. But what a kill, what a play. This Earthshaker and this Vengeful Spirit, they make a lot of things possible unless they get caught out alone. So that's very interesting what we see here. And that is all for this guy. This guy here is supposed to be the farmer and he's doing at the moment a good job. I'm wondering what he's going next for. With the free farm he has at the moment we might see... Oh, first we see a fight here. There's actually an earth splitter but the ravage being used. So Bok is just gonna get a tiny bit damage. Ogre, what are you doing here? I don't think you can achieve anything. He's gonna stun Heinrich because he knows he's pretty much dead. And that's pretty much the second one down. I don't know. This was pretty much a Harakiri version of a gank attempt. And in the meantime, Dusa doesn't care. She's just like, yo guys, I'm farming, I'm doing objective damage. And Chibix rotating in here. I don't even think he can kill that Medusa at the moment alone. There's a long arrow of fishing. Well, the angle is quite right, but the range. Like, it stopped here, Medusa was there. Nope, that doesn't work out. In the mid, however, oh, there's a slow on Bombach. But instant reaction by him, there came the stun out. And now he's running with pretty much the, the same movement speed. That's 365 versus 415, so... Well, he can't really run away, but there is Bok, and now, do we have a slow on any one of them? Oh, nice multicast, but, whoa, swap him out. That was beautiful, but at the mo same time, he's now silenced. Do we have enough magic damage? Is there a pretty low? He doesn't get to use the ultimate. He was holding back on it, and now Ogre also in trouble. The racer should be able to catch up here. Multicast uh, Bloodlust doesn't help, so it's a two-for-one trade. Only the Vengeful Spirit fell on this one. Again, a beautiful swap out, otherwise Bok would have been in trouble that ma like that damage on him was pretty sick. Still, the Elder Titan was not around. That kind of didn't help. And of course, Isera coming in there directly into the stuns. That was also bad news. We're going to see Amanta being soon finished on that Medusa. That's 17 minutes. All the utility items with face boots. And Amanta finished. Like, his farm, you definitely can't complain. But oh, for now, we have a slow here on Chewy. Plasma Field is not going to hit. We have a slow on Bombach as well. Some Arcane Bolts flying. But I don't think anything is happening here. We have no Acro Storm, which I definitely don't like. It's like one point Acro Storm. You could use it at least for harass purposes, but he's not using it at all. New rune spawning. Chibik's gonna get that bounty rune. Top is an invisibility rune. Not, well, not uninteresting for Isera actually. Sneaking up with it might be interesting. He's, by the way, going for a Ghanem Scepter. We see it. He's like, 
well, 920 gold short of finishing that Arcanum Scepter. To be honest, I don't really like that item right now, because we saw it in the last fight, he doesn't even get his ultimate off, but, well, he still wants to go for, obviously, Arcanum Scepter, it's, it's gonna boost that magical burst strategy they have, but, yeah, I think he has to not be so melee all the time, because there's just too many stuns against Isera. At the moment, well, we see Chivix rotating in the mid, wants to get some damage done here, but Heinrich is already there, trying to steal some damage, and bottom, I think sooner or later, we're gonna see them pushing the tier 1 tower as well. It's only Chewy here and he alone he can't really do anything. He has to even be careful. If he's gonna get swapped and then there is well obviously Bombard with easy combinations of like stun chaining that's pretty easy. So let's see what's happening here. At the moment he's holding back there is an Aqua Storm just to slow it all down but still they can apply a lot of pressure here on this tower. Oh well Vengeful Spirit was looking for it in the end they're gonna get that tower regardless like Echo Stomp is on cooldown, so make that yep, easy tower for the Titan. At the same time though, Isera is getting finally kill on the Medusa. This is, I think, the first one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 0, 1 and 2. These are the stats at the moment for the Medusa. So Medusa has gone down 19 minutes in for the first time, but till then she achieved quite a farm. Like Mantis Tire was finished. He bought a self, he has 300 gold which was reliable gold, so he, in the end he didn't even lose anything but XP obviously for the other team. And see this idle that, whoa, again I'm missing a kill, whoa, with that blink dagger, Echo Slam used, Chubix died within just seconds. I didn't expect this one, I thought he's going back, I thought he's leaping, but no, it didn't really happen. However, Isera, well the Scarif Mage Shagasaurus was TPing out, Isera still sticking around for a tiny bit, but well, now he's pretty much doing the same. The tower being secured. This won't fall for quite a while. And it's quite interesting. If you look at the tower, it's like 50% here, about 60% here. And bottom, well, 80% down on the towers. But it's quite hilarious that in Cedar's Idol, they didn't manage to get any tier 1 tower. And this is also gold that's definitely missing. I mean, 7.5k 7, 7 at the moment lead for Arcanis, even a bit more heading towards the 10k. And this is, of course, with three tier 1 towers still standing on their side. This is all gold that Insidious Idol desperately needs. We also must not forget that Arcanus managed to get the last hit on all of the towers. But right now, well, Shagasaurus, he sees Bok. What they need is a rotation here by Isera. He's blinking in. There is probably the silence coming up. Where's the ultimate? The ultimate is not ready again. Still, Bok, it will be enough for a kill. Medusa can't really do anything about it. And this is not just any kill. This is a 737 gold godlike streak ended. Jesus Christ, that's some nice little gold coming towards the Skyrath Mage actually. With this he can pretty much finish his Forster, it's already ready in the base waiting for him. And finally we also have the first tier 1 tower down by Chibix who also starts to get, well, some items. Obviously the Midas is helping because like killing wise and farming wise he wasn't as successful. He's only 95 and 2 compared to the Dusa with 157 CS at the moment. And of course the tower last hit. Let's see. Heinrich is stunned, top. They want to get that tier 2 tower. No damage stolen, so he doesn't hit for too much, but, well, <laughs> Bombach wanted to get it with the Enchant Totem. There is the slow. Astro Spirit is hunting them. They want to get that deny on the tower, and now it's working. So it's the first time we're going to see a tower being denied. Less gold for Arcanus, and at the same time, they lose quite some HP on their tower, on that tier 2 tower bottom, because Chibix is here. Medusa alone can't really do anything. The snake is going to slow her down. 50% damage done. But top, they want to go in. And what do we have? There's a nice little fissure. It's not enough to completely block them. No, Shagasaurus managed to get through. If the fissure was that way, then Shagasaurus would have been dead. But it was slightly off, so there was like this little way around. Well, too bad. I have to see where's my dash. There we go. Nobody was complaining about anything in the overlay? No. Okay, then we just assume it's fine. Well, Medusa using her illusions at the moment, farm for her as well while she's taking the neutral camps, or maybe even, well, that nicely stacked ancient camp that's still waiting for her. Like, item progression, what do we get up next? I mean, Heinrich has the mech finished. For him, it's, I guess, the Arganum Scepter next. Uh, well, Fried Butterflies, he is definitely on a full support mission. While well, they are waiting here for that ET to come in, there's Blink Dagger Force stuff on. Uh, say it on the Titan. And we're gonna have a similar one on the Earthshaker pretty much soon. They're gonna, yeah, they're gonna get rid of that ET pretty much soon. 
But at the same time, well, at least Chibix is doing the split push dance. But oh my god, Chewie, I can't even, I can't even look at it. They're just waiting for him to commit. But then again, well, Mech being used right now. Bombach coming behind the tower. Maybe he wants to go high ground there as well. There, the blink's coming out. And now the rotation is coming in here from the high ground. They just scouted it out. There's the Mirana ultimate, but they have dust somewhere. Oh, nice, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. That one really hurt. I mean, this was tower. This was Mystic Flare and a multicast. Everything held in position, but oh, they see Bok here. What they don't see is never mind. They, d I mean, they they know the Ravage is up, so going in here might be kind of a dangerous thing. Heinrich, well, he was thinking about that static link. It's not coming. You can see this L. They stick together. The win right now. If the Medusa would join this fight, Mystic Snake, the ultimate on, and a five-man Ravage just in this position mid here. I don't think Insidious Idol can actually take this fight. But Medusa, she doesn't even care. She's only interested in getting that farm done. Chibix is coming in, blood lasted up, but well, he doesn't really care. Medusa just wants to keep farming, and in the mid, well, the Earthshaker is back, and he's TPing mid as well. So I think they're gonna repeat what they already had. This is also some nice ward here coming on the high ground by Insidious Idol. The other ward is offensive in the jungle. And by Arcanis, well, this one has to be refreshed pretty much soon, and there's not a second one. Everything else is really just sentries. But let's see, Shagasaurus versus Medusa. He needs someone else for this kill. Alone, he cannot kill him. Oh, well, at least he's saying hello. But look at the right clicks on Shagasaurus. Now he's slowing him down, at least. Is Medusa following up? Well, actually, with the snake, this might be interesting. Shagasaurus, this is a bad idea. The snake coming out and a right click. No, oh my god, he doesn't use the snake. For the instant damage, I thought Snake and the right click would have been enough, but Chagasaurus, he makes it out. Well, at least they're gonna get the tier 2 tower and the mid razor again, getting the right click, uh, the last right click on this one. I think that makes it two towers for the razor, one for the tight hunter, and one for the Medusa. If I'm not mistaken. Top that one was denied, yep. Yeah. But still, Arcanis and tower score, definitely way better. Experience, well, it's. It's stagnant at the moment. Only 5k down from 7.5. And gold, it's stagnant. Just as stagnant as the experience craft. So, Insidious Idol, they hold on. At the moment, we have Vengeful Spirit all being slowed. But before anything happens here, he does a swap, trying to bring Shagasaurus clearer. But with the Mirana Ultimate, they're still living and they're going back. Dust being used. And nope, they're not going for it. Or are they going for it? Chipix has come from the other side, but the arrow, it didn't connect like on all the any of the others it just connected on the vengeful spirit and with that they're going back the titan that didn't even bother to go in there that was also one of those interesting fights where i thought if they go all out they could easily make something happening ravage medusa joining the razor ultimate but arcanus at the moment i think they kind of underestimate the lineup they have maybe for a good reason maybe it's the right decision and maybe I just feel too confident with Arcanus items and everything but oh there's a nice little go here on Isera they are trying it but there is no echo no there is no echo on the poor Earthshaker there was some blink coming out by the Earthshaker but he only had a chance to him but this one was too late though he was blocked by his own fish and needed to wait for the blink dagger that didn't really work out Heinrich however well he's gonna be stunned in the mid there's no arrow follow up it's on cooldown and yeah, the Dusa, as expected, she's going directly for the Scotty. It's coming out right away. No mercy. And do we have something in the cure already? Never mind that, it is already done. She's done. So what else do we see after this one? Right now, we don't have any evasion, nothing else coming out by the Marana. What is the Marana doing anyway? I mean, 5.5k gold, Jesus Christ. Like Chibix, is he planning on buying a boat or something in Monaco? Because this one, it's pretty greedy. For now, they're gonna deboard just a tiny bit around their base. The other wards, they're still standing. Arcanis, they deboarded here. This world was not found. We have another aggressive one by uh, by Arcanis here, looking into the mid. And also pretty nice is actually this one before the former tier two tower. But right now, if they escape, for example, with the Murano ultimate on, then you have something where you can see them on their retreat path without having to use dust or anything like that. That's why I like this random sentry ward in the mid. However, what's the next step? 
I think it's aggression by Arcanus. With that smoke in the background, it's three people, it's a double stun, and this time, even the Medusa is part of it. But we have to see, we have to see who's actually baiting this out. And Chewie's standing in the base. We have the Orgrimmagi a tiny bit out of the base. I don't think they want to jump it under the tier 3 tower. Then again, why not? If they actually go in with Ravage, Acro Slam, like, I don't think there's anything they can do. But at the moment, well, the Astro Spirit is scouting out a lot. Even the Acro, well, the Acro Storm was coming out. Okay, they, they're gonna push. Yeah, oh, what's coming on Chewie? No, this is not enough. And again, they tried the combination. Is there even throwing out everything? It's just enough for the Earthshaker kill. But in the end, well, that's pretty much it. That's the end of aggression on both sides. They're gonna get, well, not much done on the tier 3 tower. Chibix, however, he got that tier 2 tower bottom. And now Medusa is back to defending. This was one of those fights where I thought like, okay guys, either you jump in and go all out, ravage, acro slam at the same time on two or three target, and then you just fast retreat. But instead they were just going for the normal siege mode sort of thing. And it is idle, they instantly just spammed a whole damn magical burst out. Chibix in the meantime, he's trying to duel with Roshan, but uh, it's not really working. He needs someone else tanking this up because he is just not tanky enough. Or let's say Roshan is just too tanky. With that multicast, that definitely helps. But well, we have the Venture Spirits scouting it out. Minus armor and all, and they are retreating. There is a nice little swap. Who's stunning who? With a multicast, that might be another kill here on the Vengeful Spirit. It's a 1 1 trade. Is there just putting the ultimate in and they're like, hey guys, thank you, Roshan on 50%. Let's go for it. Astro Spirit. Maybe we're gonna have a slowdown here. Bok at the moment, the one can. Uh, yep, there is the Acro Stomp. It's coming in. Still, Medusa doesn't care. She's like, yo guys, we're gonna get that Roshan. This is gonna happen. Yep, this is gonna be happening here. That's the 1 1 trade. Not much happened there. And in Zidus Idol, they just prepared a Roshan. Arcanus are the ones benefiting from it. This is free experience, free gold, and the Aegis on the Dusa. Now I think they're in a very good position. Aegis on the Dusa, which means you can actually send the Dusa in the front lines. Can maybe, maybe even save the ultimate till after the Aegis pops. This is really bad news. Bad news for the tier 2 tower because I, th I can think, yeah, I think they can prevail around this tower right now. Also, the item progression here that's coming out on the Titan is pretty sick because in about 300 gold we have soon the refresher orb on the Titan. And to be honest, I don't think Insidious Idol is prepared for a double ravage. I mean, right now he has been holding back on the ravages. We saw that mid where they gave away the Earthshaker for just a tiny bit damage on a tier 3 tower. But if he really wants to, if he really goes all out with those ravages, I just don't think anything's happening. Acrostom completely off the target, and they're gonna finish even the enemy ancients. So Arcane is looking good. After this Roshan, they're still leading by 5k in experience, 7.5k in gold. This is like a, a patch of 10 minutes where almost nothing changed. Except for here and there, some objectives going down. I think, I think this Roshan might have been like the tipping point for, <coughs> for this. But, but let's see, let's see what else is happening here in the mid. We have some illusions going for the tier three tower, but that's pretty much all it was. Instead, they are just settling with the simple fact that they can farm even the enemy jungle. Chibix is trying to do something similar. Well, he went instantly for a Monkey Kingba. So that kind of excludes the possibility for the Dusa to go for a butterfly, even though it's it's still a possibility. Like damage-wise, the butterfly it has a nice yield. We have to say though that Chibix is the only is the only one with like some nice physical damage, right clicks, and since he has a MKV, there's really no point in butterfly. I mean, all the all the rest is just. I don't know, it's not really worth it. Oh, do we have an interrupt Chibix? No, Bombard, he is guessing the wrong direction. So, that's another tower down, but it's just a tier 1 tower. However, Chibix, he's a rich bitch. Like, we have to say that. Rich bitch, big time. And in the meantime, well, the Dusa going for some more damage here. And with that Arganem Scepter, well, oh, beautiful. Save here by the Vengeful Spirit, but there we have it. That was number 1. There's number 2. The Ogre is definitely going down after they lost. No, never mind that. He's still somehow alive, but Earthshaker is putting an end to it. And now Heinrich with that BKB on. Nisera can't really do anything here. They want to get this Rex. This is all they want. And at the moment, they're doing it. But in the background, we have at least Shagasaurus doing something. But he's out of mana. No, no, no. 
They want to get these racks. They don't care about the rest. No, that's pretty much it. Dooza just standing her ground while they just do some little, I don't know, clashes in the background. But nothing else is happening here. Look at this. They have no recipe against the Dooza at the moment. Even Chibix, he can't really do anything. He just can't do anything. His right clicks are just the strongest, but look against the Medusa. Well, he doesn't really care, but is there anything coming? One good arrow and they might even get a revenge kill, but Chibix, no. He says, let them go, guys. We have no chance. They are just too bully for us. And this is really bad news. This is really bad news. We saw Arcanus just standing in their base, ignoring all the bursts, all the heroes right clicking, and they were just like going for the objectives. Just with all the tankiness they brought. They lose some for an experience, sure, but yeah, objectives are objectives. And Bok, well, found by Chibix. A nice little stun here, and yep, yeah, that's it. Bok, he's going down. Nice little play by Chibix, but he has to run. There is Vengeful Spirit and Heinrich coming, and there's even a smoke gang. But at the moment, they're holding back. Oh, what a beautiful Fisher here. Locking Shagasaurus in, but I don't know. The others, they don't really plan to go in. There is Sarah. He wants to get the Vengeful Spirit. That's one kill. And now, well, we have the Ogre just TPing out. And maybe we're going to see the same here on Chewie. Do we have enough damage? No, it's not enough. He barely survives on about 200 HP. While Chibix is somewhere else. He has no TP. He has to be careful. He has a level 4 leap. Sure, that's one thing. But, well, worst case scenario, he has a Moonlight Shadow and we have no gem or anything else on the other side. Even the Plasma Field is not hitting. However, Shagasaurus and maybe the Ogre Magi might be enough on the Razor. He has no BKB at the moment. The arrow is off the mark. Nope, this is not going to end in anything. So 23-26 in Cities Idle Day, they might lead in kills. But when it comes to Tankiness and Objectives Arcanus, they're just having the advantage right now. That, that Dooza... She just doesn't care at the moment. She really does not care. And let's see. I mean, the Aegis is, is running out right now. So they can't go for a second push with the same Aegis. We have to see. We have to see where this one is, is going. I mean, 25 seconds, we have a double Ravage again. Everything else, all the ultimates, they are not on long cooldowns. I mean, this is just 90 seconds. We have 60 seconds on the Razor one. So, yep. They are ready. Even the Echo Slam is ready again. This is also just a two minute cooldown pretty much. Tiny bit more, but it's not level three yet. Uh, I really have the feeling that if they jump in with a double ravage and a nice Echo Slam on like a new s newly spawning creep wave, if you time it right at the full minute mark or the 30 seconds, they can just obliterate one or two targets, forcing maybe Insidious Idol into buybacks. And talking about buybacks, well at the moment it's only Chibix and Isera having the buybacks. It's not like Insidious Idol can come full with a full back with a full team. It's really whatever they have right now is what they have to work with. And let's see, Shagasaurus is trying to make at least some harass here with the Astral Spirit. But there's a haste show and only the creeps are affected and they're already pushing towards that tier 3 tower. Nice multicast here. But it's not going to do too much damage here. Arrow, it's not going to connect on anything. And they're already working here on the racks. Look how the racks are melting down. They have to force it. But Ravage number one. There's Ravage number two. The Ogre as such. Well, it's nothing really is happening at the moment. It's just Chibix going down. He has a buyback if he wants to. Is there his ultimate? Well, they're getting two down. Shagasaurus, he was pursued. But what they want is right here. And they are successful with it. They're going to get the racks. And now, well, the Dusa is still standing. And they have no recipe for it like in Chibix well he has no buyback apparently he bought something before Bok well he gotta be careful now he's slow but he has another Ravage he didn't even use the second Ravage because of the BKBs and yeah Isera there's just nothing there's just nothing they can do against the Dusa even if everyone is dead the Medusa is alive long enough just to go for the objectives he's even as greedy, greedy enough to just go back in the base saying hello to that building want to get that 111 gold. So I don't know what, what happens to Insidious Idol, but this is this is looking really dire for them. Like I just don't see where the damage is coming from to kill Heinrich and the Dusa. That's that's the biggest problem at the moment. The Dusa is really giving me a headache. Like Mr. Mighty Savior here, he is just too tanky. And he got a ton of gold on top of it all, but for now Shagasaurus is on the hunt on a vengeful spirit by the end he's gonna go down. Isera was too late, so they're not even getting away with this one. 
it's just 40 seconds of a support of a roaming support that's down. That's I don't know, nothing crazy. But Bog, well, he has one Ravage still ready. 80 seconds on a refresher. That's pretty much the the longest of their cooldowns that's holding them back. Besides the Echo Slam, why not why not going for it with one Ravage? I guess that might be just as successful as the Bonafide. Oh, but Chewie and even Asera being stunned, and Chewie he's just gone perfectly chained. The last hit coming by the Titanta, and that. Yep, that is pretty much the top push. We have creeps here entering the base mid already, which means we have no back to protection. Guza can easily tank this up in the mid. We even have the ultimate being used. It's on just on the 40 seconds, but yeah, used just to get the creeps of Cliff being used. Et even on a buyback, so they really want to fight, but. Well, back to protection didn't kick in yet, and let's see Isera taking huge damage here. Nice multicast before the Ravage is coming out, so at the moment it's looking bad for Bok to get anything through, but look at the Dooza, she's just tanking up, and well, Chibix, he's pulling the shortest straw in the end. No one is dead yet, but the objectives, Chibix, he's just like, no guys, we have no chance. They're gonna get the objectives, and there's the Ravage I've been waiting for. Ogre is the one to die, then Shagasaurus follows up, and now it was about Isera's turn. To die. Arcanis, they just have this under control. The, that game was completely under control. Four men roaming, four men fighting, and wow. That was really one of those wow games. They were able to make space for that Medusa all the way. And in the end, well, you saw it, guys. In Zeta's Idol, they can kill how many people they want. As long as Medusa is alive, you lose your racks each and every push. Either way guys, this is a two game series, so I'm coming back for game number two in just some minutes. Some music, some ads, and that's pretty much it. So be right back, five minutes, new game.